So today's video is going to be on this 7.5 inch 3D printed subwoofer. The process of getting this subwoofer to work has been a very long and tedious process. This is actually version 1.1 that's sitting in front of us. Version 1 met its untimely demise when the voice coil shot out and broke the cone. So version 1.1 ended up with a reinforced cone, basically printed in 0.6 millimeter base mode versus 0.4. So I added in a dust cap to go down in and kind of align the voice coil up in on this version 1.1, as version 1 had some issues with the voice coil lining up perfectly height-wise. So this dust cap sits down in, it reinforces the cone, which gives it more rigidity, and it also sets the height for the, uh, the voice coil. The spider on this, the first one was a flat spring design like all my other speakers. However, version 1.1 now uses a VarioSure TPU-based spider. The surround on this speaker is just a half round versus the accordion style that I've been doing. I'm probably going to move to an accordion style moving forward as I feel I get better control out of it and it's easier to print. So much like version 13 of the speaker, this speaker or subwoofer uses a screw together magnet design where the plates are all encased inside of a screw together housing and then um, it just screws into the speaker which makes for tearing apart and changing out things really really simple. The difference here is instead of using a ring magnet this uses an array of 3 8 magnets. So the box for this I wanted to do a wood box but time constraints and money constraints put me in a position to where I just had to do a 3D printed box to kind of get me testing this thing in a timely manner. So I pretty much maxed out my 300 by 300 build plate building this box and I used almost an entire kilogram roll of PLA printing this top portion here. There was just about 50, 60 grams of filament left on the roll. And then this bottom piece here is PETG and the legs are PETG. I did this in two pieces though, so that this bottom piece can be changed out and that will kind of allow me to tune the box for future iterations because I don't particularly want to print a new one kilogram box for every single subwoofer that I do. I really want to reuse this box as You'll see on the screen, it was just about a day and a half of printing and a kilogram of plastic. And if I did that every time, it would get time consuming and very costly. So I sealed the box together with just blue tack, just between the two halves. Then the subwoofer itself, I used blue tack as well to go down. I should probably look into printing a foam gasket to go under it as well. So this subwoofer utilizes a 55 millimeter voice coil. I don't know if that's the right way to go or not, as I've noticed when my voice coils are getting bigger, they tend to be more flexible, and it's leading to them rubbing on the magnetic gap. This subwoofer, much like the speaker, is modular in that the surround is held in with a plate, and then the uh, spider is held in with a plate and you can pull those off and then it releases the moving components. And while I do glue all the moving components together as I have not found a way to actually swap those back and forth, it does make it where I don't have to reprint things like the frame and the lower frame and the magnetic holder. So it does save me a lot of plastic and a lot of time on reiterations. So yeah, that's about all the design features of this subwoofer. We're going to move into a short little listen to the subwoofer make some noise and then I'll slowly bring in version 13 speakers to kind of fill out the music so you can see what the sub brought to it and then what the speakers add to it as well so you get kind of a full range of it. And then we'll move to the DAT system, look at the feel small parameters and then we'll move to REW and see how this lined up with the version 13 speakers to kind of see if it complements it or hinders it or what it does. So, so yeah, um, we'll jump into that, guys.
Side note here, um, version 1.1 is now broken as well. Um, yeah, I was kind of in between videoing and I was using it just to kind of test with and whatnot. And apparently I might have sent a little too much power to the voice coil and it melted and became wrapped around the the pole piece on the uh, motor. So unfortunately version 1.1 is now dead as well. The files will still be released as usual. Um, I will say though, do not send it a bunch of power because it will destroy itself. I need to work on a cooling system inside this somehow by either moving to a higher temperature material or maybe just adding a fan in here at this point I don't really know but I need to work on cooling down that motor because it is getting too hot and unfortunately melting the thermoplastic so yeah back to the video okay before we move on a quick word about today's sponsor PCB way PCB Way is your premier stop for custom prototype services, offering a unique opportunity of $5 off your first order as a first time user. You can get single or dual layer PCBs ranging up to dimensions of 100mm by 100mm with a quantity of 10, beginning at only $0. With only shipping and handling of charges applied to your initial purchase, encounter unparalleled quality and exceptional customer service. I personally recommend PCB Way for bringing your innovative concepts to life. Explore all they have at PCBWay.com today. Now, back to the video. So we're in DATS now, looking at the overall deal small parameters of the speaker. Um, this MMS is a little off. It should be higher, um, but like I said, I believe a lot of this is caused by the touching of the coil to the pole piece in the motor. This should be more of a spikier graph right here. It should spike up. And with it being rough like this, kind of indicates that there were some issues in doing measurements of this. 
So take all of these kind of as they are. Um, so yeah, but like I said, I need to see about lowering this FS down to a sub 100 hertz range for it to be considered a true subwoofer. So that's kind of the goals in moving forward here is to drop this FS down to a level that's acceptable for a subwoofer while maintaining an SPL of preferably over the 81, 82 range for one watt at one meter. So that's kind of the end goal of this subwoofer. Now we're in REW to kind of see how the speaker performed inside of the enclosure that I had it in. So we can see it's a very peaky kind of performance that it had, but it does perform down low somewhat at 50-ish hertz. It's performing just about 75 decibels or so, 77 decibels, which isn't horrible for it to perform 77 decibels or greater up as you could drop this down and level it out with a um, digital sound processing software. And then you can add more power to this. This is only with an amplifier producing about 0.5 volts at the output. And this speaker should easily be capable of one to two volts at the output side of that amplifier. So this would definitely boost it up to a more reasonable 80-ish decibel range for the subwoofer. It's not great, but it is usable. Also, I did a full sweep on this, even though usually things up over the 200-ish, 300-ish range are never seen by subwoofers. Most subwoofers hardly ever see anything over the 100 and something range. But being a 2.1 system I'm going for, I'm trying to divide this up to where I just have a high and a low. So I'm going to try to extend the subwoofer out up into the low hundreds as much as I can. So that's kind of how it performs like this. Um, and now we've got it where um, the red line is representing the subwoofer and the green line is rent representing version 13 of my speaker build. So we can see that it does complement it in that it kind of goes along with what's going on in the speaker. However, it doesn't complement it in that it doesn't drag the lows out here. Ideally, I would want this to come up here and come across and then maybe fall off like this is the ideal kind of way that I would like the subwoofer to perform. So moving forward, that's going to be the goal to kind of drag this whole thing down as low as I can get it. But yeah, that's about what I have for REW. So now we're going to move on to some closing statements, and that should wrap the video up. So future design plans include an accordion style surround, and potentially looking at making the cone shallower so I can bring the size in. I'm potentially looking at making the spider wider, and then I'm looking into making it as thin as I can. I'm going to see kind of the limits of what I can push this stuff down to for thinness to see if I can get a little bit more flexibility out of the suspension because the FS of this is just, it's far too high to be a subwoofer. I need an FS that's sub 100 hertz to be a subwoofer, but would be really nice if I could get it like sub 60 hertz. Um, so I really need to get it pushed way, way, way down from the 190-ish that it's sitting at now. So those are kind of the main goals moving forward with like version 2 and version 3 here is to just push the FS down and then see if I can solve the issue of it rubbing that pole piece. I don't know if I need to just make that voice coil just a touch bigger or what, but I'm going to try to couple that with using 28 gauge wire or 26 gauge wire and kind of see where that puts me for space. I'll probably just print a couple test pieces and see where that puts me. So yeah, those are kind of the big major things that I want to work on in the next one to two iterations. That's about all I have for today. Um, if you've watched this far, uh, like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys.